Okay, so I started, um, we talked about the moment of inertia for a wheel um, of radius r and mass m. So this is, has some mass there. It's all at the a radius r away and mass m. And we said that the moment of inertia for that would be m r squared. Because in general, the moment of inertia is the sum over i m i r i squared. But in this case, if you break this into a whole bunch of little pieces, um, all those pieces are the same distance away r. So that comes out and you get the sum of all the pieces, which is just m. So this is m r squared. OK, but what if it's not, <clears throat> what if it's not a, a, a wheel? What if it's a disk? Do I have a disk? Just to show you. Oh, let's just, let's just use this. This is a, a compact disk. Get it? Um, but say it has no hole. But, but now it's all spread out over here. You know, the first question is, would the moment of inertia change? And if so, because it would, would you have a greater or lesser value? A lot of students said, oh, it would be the same, because the same mass, the same radius, is going to have the same uh, moment of inertia, but it's actually different. Because in the case of now a solid disk, let's just make this solid, then some of the mass, if you look right here, this is no longer, you can no longer factor out the R. If I break this into a whole bunch of little pieces, some of them are, are close to the axis of rotation and some are far away. So, so they're not all the same. You can't factor that out. So how would you do it? How would you do a problem like that? Well, looking for my blue marker. OK. Um, so in this case, uh, we would just say, let's just look at a typical tiny little piece like that. And if I find the moment of inertia just due to that piece, I could call that di equals dm r squared. And then what I could do is add up all those little pieces. Um, and if the piece size is really small, that becomes an integral. So I'd say i equals the integral over that whole area of dm r squared. You can do that, but it's not super easy. It's not super easy because um, you have to do a double integral. You have to add up the pieces this way, and then you have to do the next row, and the next row, and the next row. And the limits of integration are not just numbers, right? Because they go across here is different from going across there. Okay, so that's not the trivial, the trivial list thing you could do. But we can use this idea and not break it up into little pieces, but instead break this into rings. So here's how I'm going to take my disk. There's a center. I'm going to say, let's say I break it into a little ring, a whole bunch of little rings like that. And I'm going to add up the moment of inertia due to all those rings. This is going to be a much easier thing to do, because now I can say this ring has a radius of r <coughs> and has a thickness of dr, and it has a mass of dm. And then I can just add up from r equals 0 to r equals capital R. So I can say i equals the integral from r equals 0 to r equals r dm r squared. Now you can't integrate that, because this is a variable that changes. And your integration variable is a different variable. So we need to get dm in terms of r, or r in terms of dm. But I'm going to tell you it's easier to get dm in terms of r. So how, how much is the mass of that thing? Well, if I assume that the ratio of area to this ring to the total area is the same as the ratio of the mass to the total mass, I can, I can do that. I can get that to work. So I can say dm over the total mass it's going to be the area of that little thing over the total area, which is going to be pi r squared. So what's the area of that ring? Well, you may say I need to use this difference of uh, you know pi r big r squared minus pi little r squared. But we can cheat, because in, in the case where this is a super, super thin ring, then I can say uh, the area here is going to be 2 pi r dr. Because the, if, you, if you cut it and stretch it out, it's a rectangle. And it has a height of dr and a length of 2 pi r. 
the, the length of the two sides is essentially the same if dr is, goes to zero. So there's my uh, ratio of masses to ratio of areas. So if I solve this for dm, I get two, the, the pi's cancel, two big, the total mass dr over r squared. And now I can put that in up there. 2m over r squared is a constant. Yep. So this is going to be, um, I get 2m r squared, and then I get the integral of r squared dr, and that's going to be 2m over r squared, this is from 0 to r, uh, r cubed over 3 from 0 to r. Why does it look like I made a mistake? Two-thirds? That's not right. Two pi r dr d. Someone help me here. I made a mistake. Because I know it's one-half m r squared is the answer. OK, and that's not even giving me. Oh, oh. Uh. Not an R. So this is, uh, there's another R in there, so this is R cubed. So it's going to be R to the fourth over four. Ha ha! Okay, so now if I put in uh, big R minus, and then the zero, I get 2m R to the fourth over four R squared. That cancels, that cancels, and I get one half m R squared. So that's the moment of inertia for a disk. It's, it's half the much as for a ring of the same size and mass. You know, this practice of breaking things down into pieces to integrate it, uh, we do a little bit in this class. But when you get to the next physics class, we do things like this a lot more. So it is, it is useful to do.